Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese and welcome to this episode of the Ellison Education video series. We are die cutting rubber and stamping up a storm on today's episode. And if you look here, you can see that I've got lots of stamped images, but I want to start with having a student paper that you want to do something special. You know, they did a really good job and you want to create a rubber stamp that allows you to be able to ink a happy face or a heart or a star or something on there. You can make all of those using your Ellison machine and just self-adhesive rubber. So I'm going to take the tiny heart die and self-adhesive rubber and I'm going to just place the rubber so that I'm covering against the blade and because I'm cutting it in the Big Shot Pro I have it with the blade sitting up. I'm going to put the cutting pad right over the top and then roll it through and right now I've just cut out four of those tiny hearts. I'll bring them over and when you punch them out, I'll set them here so you can see, it gives you the elements you then are going to want to stamp. However, in order to stamp them, you need to actually have them on something. You need a mount of some sort. So if you look here, you can see lots of choices and options. If you have a wood block, a wood block makes a great stamp mount. If you have um, clear acrylic, all the craft stores carry these. These make a good stamp mount and you can see through what you're stamping. But there are a lot of things that you might already have sitting around. If you had film in, in your camera and you have any of those old film canisters, this is one that I made the, with a happy face that I had from some time ago when I still had film in my camera. And then if you have any of these plastic con containers, they work great. Even um, a cork from a wine bottle is a great mount that you can place something onto. I'm going to take this and I'll take the self-adhesive rubber that I just cut out and I'm going to place it right onto the mount. I'll turn this so that it faces you. I like to do a couple of layers just because I don't want to run the risk of when I ink it up, I don't want to ink up the circle edge around here and it's easier to do if it's a little bit thicker. And I have to share with you, if I decide later that I want to ink and stamp in a different color, I don't even usually pull it off. I just stick another one over it so that eventually my rubber stamps, they may end up being like an inch thick. It's just quicker and easier. So once you have the stamp created, then I'm going to just use this red ink to be able to go back and I'm going to tap it into the ink pad and the first time you do it, you know, the rubber was, had no ink on it. So you do, do, you do tap it uh, uh, quite a bit at first. And then once it's built up, then you don't need to do much. And then I'll go down right next to that A plus and I'm going to put a nice big red heart just so they know that I think they did a really great job. Now that's using ink along with the rubber stamps that you're creating. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you haven't used your rubber stamps with paint, oh, you're missing a really cool thing. Look at these choices. If you, this is one where I've created a stamp. I'll bring it over here and show you. Here's the rubber stamp using the large peach. Here's the stamp using the large pear. And I've painted ink on, I mean, I've painted paint on there. We're going to see how to do this. This I stamped it onto a fabric tote bag. Just imagine if you're teaching recycling and the kids want to make a recyclable bag for the grocery store, this would be a great option. Down here you can see I've used paint to create a little bag that would be great to hold a gift for the holidays because I've used the tiny Christmas lights. And then next to that there's a few t-shirts that have been stamped with paint flowers and painted hearts, um, the tiny hearts. If you look here you can see I used the same peach rubber stamp, but instead of stamping on fabric, I just was using it to stamp on paper because this has now become the cover of a report that could be a report, let's say, on Georgia. So what I would do then is take the rubber stamp and I ran it through and cut the rubber just the way you saw me do with the heart. When it's time to ink it up, let me show you how easy it is to do that. I'm going to just take, and I'll start with, um, just a regular sponge applicator and I'm going to put the orange right over the peach itself. You can mix colors. The thing that's so cool about this paint is it gives you the opportunity to blend and mix colors. You're going to see that I'm going to be able to put layers I'm going to mix in some red and create some highlights on there and I'm going to do it all directly on this itself. I'll use a separate applicator. In this case, I'll just use a paintbrush to go back and add the green 
that will be the leaf of the peach. And once again, if I wanted to, I could go back and add shading by just putting a darker shade of green at different places on this. At this point, let me go back and take and add just, I'm going to take just a little bit of red and I'm just going to use it to kind of blend into this orange. It's not an exact science, but I tell you, it is so cool. Wait till you see how fun this turns out. Once you have what you think is going to be a nice blended combination, let me come over here to just a piece of white construction paper. And I'm going to just kiss this against the white. And I do want to make sure that I press down and I get the paint to come off on all the outside edges, just like you would with any, any rubber stamp. And when you pull it off, how fun is that? If you've missed an area, it's not at all difficult to go back and place this directly over the top because it's see-through. I can see what I'm doing and I can see that I missed, I just didn't press down hard enough in this one spot right here. So in order to get the stem so it looks like it's attached, I went back and added that in to add that detail. You can see how then this, once I cut it out and I've matted it on to a piece of black paper that's then been mounted onto this green cover. What a great report this makes. Whether you're stamping with paint or with ink, you and your students will find tons of uses for your custom rubber stamps.